Hello, welcome to episode two of the Real Mill Podcast. My name is Jacob. And I'm Joe. And we apologize for it taking a long time to get the second episode out. But as you know, everybody's super like paranoid and everybody's cautious about the whole coronavirus going around and you know that kind of like sidetracked everything not only the podcast but you know life in general yeah so pretty much what we want to talk about in this episode is like everything that's been like going on outside of our lives you know so like sporting events getting canceled other stuff I think we're going to talk a little, little bit about music and stuff, too. Yeah, we're going to talk about our origin stories and getting into music. Yeah. Change and, things uh, up a bit. The form, the formation of the greatest punk rock band that never happened. <laughs> Hell joy. Hell joy. Oh, God. So, uh, That's ass. Yeah, let's just jump right into it. So, uh, what are these uh, rumors that you heard about... Uh, the NBA and shit. <laughs> oh, I I've been I've been hearing a couple people say that like the NBA is. I don't know how true this is. I don't know what to say about it, but I've been hearing people say that instead of playing the games or like playing whatever they're they usually do, basketball I guess right. <laughs> yeah, basketball uh, things. They're they're playing that two K. The two K twenties. Yeah, the, the yeah the two K twenties, bro. That's fucking weird. That's weird. Like, I, I've seen a lot of sports go, like, like continue what they're doing but have no crowds. Like, WWE, for example. Yeah. Speaking of that, with, like, fucking basketball not having a, you know, a season because of all of this. Pretty much no sporting event. No sporting organization having any games except for fucking professional wrestling. You know, I, it's been stated in the news that people are actually getting, you know, pretty pissy because... They can't gamble. Like, where are they going to gamble on? I was actually thinking, what's... Why don't they gamble on professional wrestling? Now, yes, I watch... I watch the professional wrestling. The the sport where the guys shirtless and tights roll around on the ground. That's kind of gay. You know, people like to make fun of it. And then they'll <laughs> go watch UFC, which is pretty much the same thing. <laughs> it is, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's just more real. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I don't I don't see any problem in like wanting to gamble on that shit. Because personally, if they don't watch it, they don't watch the story or anything, or they don't know the predictability of it. Sometimes, then they could just gamble on it. They just pick a wrestler and they can fucking you know go to town. Speaking of uh, wrestling, though, they had WrestleMania, their biggest event of the year. Normally brings in like crowds of eighty thousand people. Uh, rather than postponing it, because it is such a big event, you know, that's like the one... That's something you can't really postpone. That's the one show that everybody goes crazy for, even all the superstars that wrestle for that show or wrestle for the WWE. They look forward to WrestleMania making, like, a moment because it's, like, become such a, you know, such a a popular thing to have their quote-unquote WrestleMania moment. Rather than postponing it, they decided to hold it in their performance center to a uh, attendance of zero. So about four years ago, they set the attendance record for 100,000 people. And this year they set the performance, the yeah, attendance yeah, record for zero. It's pretty bullshit. you know, it kind of bummed me out because I always look forward to seeing like the visual. That's like one of the most seeing the crowd get hyped up and yeah, the crowd about the crowd noises. Person. Yeah, definitely one of the biggest parts of that those shows, because it's not like your normal show every week where there's like ten to fifteen thousand people. You you're talking like eighty thousand, and you know like the big stage and all the lights, all like the giant pyro and shit. It was just that was missing. And people were planning for a long time to go to, go to that kind of thing. Yeah, it's like a lot exactly. of the concerts and stuff that. No, like that had to get canceled. People, thousands and thousands of people bought their tickets, and then they just dropped and canceled. Or if it didn't cancel, in WWE's case, uh, they just fucking moved to a. I think that's selfish on their part. They should have just postponed it, because I mean, shit, you could have built those stories up too. 
they try to like make up for it for saying that it was too big for one night he extended it through uh saturday and sunday which just made it unnecessary she had a whole bunch of unnecessary matches not only do i think the fans who fucking paid for their tickets and waited a long time to go see that i think the wrestlers got fucked too mainly because there you know there's a superstar his name is drew mcintyre he has been in the business for like over 10 years never won like a championship kind of sucks that his first title win on the the biggest stage of them all was in front of nobody (laughs) that's kind of fucked up (laughs) that's why i was like so into like postponing it or just canceling it all together because that just kind of ruins the mood for like those big wins and everything you know what would suck what if it was somebody's like debut their their first time out there and there was nobody yeah, that would fucking suck. <laughs> I can't imagine something like that. I would that just happening. quit. Right? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. For, <laughs> That's still first, a lot of money. <laughs> first thing, first fucking, first show, and there's nobody there to watch you. Nobody there to watch you. And even then at home, you still hear them calling out the spots and everything. Yeah, it's it's an empty room. There's, there's going to be that echo. Mm-hmm. There's always going to be that, like, just, I don't know. It's, everything amplifies, it feels like. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that was my little rant about wrestling and shit. I'll, I'll, I'll never talk about WWE again on this podcast. You probably will eventually <laughs> at one point. Maybe. <laughs> but anyway. Now that that's over. No. So, yeah, speaking about that and, like, concerts getting postponed or downright canceled. You know, I still got to get some money back on some fucking tickets I bought. <laughs> uh, what you, would you buy? I don't want to fucking josh anyone because they're probably just postponing it. But right. the GK Break the Paradox release uh, party, uh, Paper Airplanes EP uh, release okay. show too. Yeah, yeah, it sucks. But you guys I'm, are listening sure. to this. I'm, I'm not mad or anything, but uh, it's understandable. I'll message you guys later. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Kind of just makes me miss like playing fucking shows or even going to shows and general. like local shows, like local bands and stuff. They're just gonna kind of push that stuff back. They're not canceling that by by any means. You know what I mean? Yeah, some of them are even like live streaming their concerts, and that's yeah. pretty cool too. But still, not the same. It, it still kind of falls into the same thing as like we're, we're, you're playing for no crowd. Mm-hmm. Just anybody who decides to pop in. Yeah, it, it's like I respect it, uh, but it's not the same as. A live show that you're at exactly and it's um like me i was planning fuck what concert was it i forgot i was planning on going to some concert i can't remember which one it was for whatever reason but um you know it was i prevail i prevail yeah i'm pretty sure it was i prevail that they, uh, they were coming out to cali no they weren't they were touring in europe i don't know I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. I hear doggos in the background. Yeah. Okay, but... uh, Yeah. Speaking of music and concerts and shit. Hey, Joseph. What's up? I'm bad at these transitions, but... <laughs> tell me about your story and how you got into guitar. Oh, how I got into guitar. How did you venture into your musical uh, journey? So when I was a kid, um, we, me and my family, we would go out to go out to Reno to my aunt and uncle's house. And um, for like a number of reasons, mostly like fa- family gatherings or just going out to visit and stuff. And like whenever it was a family gathering, my uncle and his friends and uh, they, they would they would have like a little little performance and stuff. They would they would always jump up there with their guitars and the bass and fucking jump like six feet in the air <laughs> playing fucking slayer solos and shit yep no my, my <laughs> uncle was always on acoustic uh, they were they were always doing country music but um like they would, they would just have like a little band going and me and my uh, me and all my cousins and like friends and stuff we would all be running around the house shooting each other with nerf guns and stuff having having a good time and once I heard that guitar strum, I put the Nerf guns down and I ran into that room and just sat down in front of them watching while everybody else played. And um, that kind of like, I was like, I want to do that when I get older. 
And um, after after my uncle really like noticed me doing that, like watching him, he would pull me to the side after they were like done playing and doing whatever they needed to do. And they would, um, or he would teach me like little tiny things on like one string. Like I think the first thing I like really learned was everybody's first song, Smoke on the Water. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it was on the, the high E string. And um, yeah, I didn't know a whole lot of like what I was doing, but I did it. And then I never really put the guitar down um, until uh, a couple years later. And because uh, I, I never really had my own guitar, so but I knew I still wanted to do music. So my my parents ended up putting me in drum lessons. So I did drums for a while, and we didn't have enough money to afford that. So we and I ended up just dropping out of that and kind of played with my own little drum kit outside of that. And one day. I was coming out in my front yard and my sister broke my drums. <laughs> I was mad. But um, after that, I picked the guitar back up and started playing more and more. And then, um, recently, it wasn't too recent, um, my uncle ended up passing away. The one that was like teaching me how to play like guitar and stuff. And it was like one of those things. It was like, man, if, I, if he didn't start teaching me that, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be into music like I am now. And that's when I really picked up the guitar a lot more and started writing a lot more music and and just learning more. And I I don't know I I never really put it down. It's uh it's a, it's, it's one of my sob stories, but um I feel like I I owe it to him in a way. Like I I want to do something with music. I want to do music production. Or just being a band in general. Like, it's been a minute. What's your story, Jacob? Uh, hopefully that didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> it did. Wait, wait, one more, one more. Uh, there you go. Excuse me, that was very rude of me, but fuck it. Fuck it. Okay, so, uh... My, uh, musical story... I don't even know where to begin. I don't, like, know what started it. I don't know if it was just listening to Green Day or playing Tony Ox Pro Skater. I could definitely tell you that Tony Ox Pro Skater got me into the music I listened to. And it definitely got into uh, a sport that I love. But I think it was Green Day that actually made me want to play that music rather than just listen to it. So, when I was five years old... Uh, my brother was listening to American Idiot. You know, that's fucking everybody's first Green Day album. That's not born. <laughs> that's not born before fucking 1995. Right. So. Everybody knows that song. Yeah, everybody knows that song. That album is fucking iconic. Everybody, if you haven't listened to it, then you, you definitely should. It's like one of the most important rock and roll albums of our time. Whether you want to bitch about them being what they are, that's definitely a landmark album, not only in their career, but in mainstream rock at that time. And it still holds up. So that album definitely inspired me a lot. There was a point in my life where there wasn't an album that I wouldn't listen to. I mean, there wasn't an album that I would listen to unless it was American Idiot. Yeah, we've all had those kind of things. And then when I discovered Green Day's other shit, their older stuff, I fell in love even harder. (laughs) And then I just, I don't know, I have always wanted to fucking play just like Billy Joe Armstrong. I've always wanted to, like, sing just like Billy Joe Armstrong. And, uh... Nobody can sing like him, I'm sorry. Nobody can. I think the only person who actually have come close to that was probably Matt Skiba or this band from Canada called Minority 905. <laughs> They've come pretty close. But I've always wanted to learn guitar after that. Just the those those palm mutes, just watching the way how low he played his guitar, how hard he strummed. 
I can't play it that low. I can. <laughs> I know. That's all you do. I, I raise it up a little bit. Sometimes. So, you know, playing... I, I have always had, like, these cheap-ass guitars. The strings always broke. I was too young to uh, know how to fix it. And I just never learned. I never, like got any lessons i never progressed i would just end up listening to the fucking cds and pretend to play like them so hey look that's a car ignore that (laughs) yes ignore that anyway so sophomore year comes around and i join a guitar class i met this guy named joseph yeah boy He, he was carrying an acoustic guitar around and he knew how to play, so I went up to him and I was like, yo, dude, I can play too. Let me jam on your guitar. He handed me his guitar and I fucking <laughs> made noise. It wasn't good noise, but I made some fucking noise out of the guitar. And I, was I like, realized. Yeah, man, that's good. That's good. And I was cringing low key. Yeah. I realized, man, this shit's harder than I thought. So I signed up for guitar class my uh, sophomore year, went in there. My dad bought me my first guitar. It was like an $80 uh, Oscar Schmidt Washburn. I remember that thing. Acoustic. And, uh, yeah, I got, I got a hold of the concept pretty fast. My guitar teacher really didn't teach me shit. The most yeah. he taught me was just how to put my hands on it, a few basic chords. From there on, I kind of learned everything by myself. Yeah, I've never really been able to read music. So, like, I, pl- I play by ear. So it's, it sucks. It's hard. The only time I learned how to play music was when I needed to fucking learn a song for uh, one of his tests. Because other than that, I never paid attention, nor did I even fucking care. I just wanted to play the guitar. Right. He he always played it beforehand. Mm -hmm. So I'd like listen to like listen to him do it, and I would just kind of watch his hands, and then I would just play it. And he's like, "Okay, you're good, go." And didn't wasn't there a point where like. He was just kind of like, yeah, you know how to play this? Yeah? Okay, here you go. I'm signing it off for you. <laughs> he like, didn't even listen to me play it. It was just like, oh, okay, what's the point of being in this class? It's an easy A, I guess. You know, I don't know why the fuck he would make me uh, play all the songs when he knew I could fucking play the guitar like the second time around. Right. Like, he, he made... I think the only people he like just kind of said, okay, you know how to play it and signed off for was... Me, Alex, Cole, yeah, and Cole. Yeah, and Cole. that was that was about it, huh? Yeah. You know, now I don't want to talk shit unless he's listening. But uh, remember Leslie? Yeah. She was in that class. Yeah. She was in that class, but she never fucking did a thing. Uh uh-uh, uh. There's a lot of people in there that didn't do it. Guitar. No, music. she literally didn't even fucking sit down and hold the guitar. She just hung up and like, she just hung out in Mr. Doll's office. Yeah. So I was like, what the fucking fucking shit is that? What the fucking fucking shit? That's fucking bullfuck. <laughs> that's bull, that's bull honky. That's fucking bullshit, man. Now, wasn't she a TA or something? She wasn't a TA. She was in that class. Cole was the TA. Oh, was he? Uh, he was yeah. doing more. Oh, that's why he didn't sign off on him. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why she got fucking special privileges. I kind of miss that class. I'm not going to lie. Oh, I do too. We had we had some good ass times in there. I think we met like some of our fucking closest friends in that class too. Yeah, who did we meet? <laughs> well, we got to know Gabe more in that class. Yeah. And uh, what you call it? What's his name? What's his name? Preston. Oh, do do yeah. yeah. Do we met in there? All the other ones were kind of like side pieces, <laughs> right? <laughs> we kind of never. What talked was to that one kid? Uh, was his name Daniel? Um, the one who wanted to join Haldra. Yeah. Kenny. Oh, Kenny. Kenneth. Yeah, Kenny. That, that kid, he he only played in drop D. He played in drop D on the shittiest guitar ever made. Uh, yeah, it was... It was fucking bad. It broke, and he tried gluing it back together with, like, Gorilla Glue and something. The action on that thing was so fucking high. It was unplayable. But I give, it, I give him props, because he, he did somehow manage to play it a, a good amount. I remember he stole a guitar off of the wall. Yeah. <laughs> like, he was just, oh, that's my guitar now. Just hung up his shitty A7X. <laughs> yeah, replaced it. <laughs> it, it. It wasn't a steal. It was a trade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now, what, what happened to that kid? I don't know. He just disappeared. Yeah, he just dropped off at the face of the year. Wasn't it in, like, the middle of the school year? 
Yeah. It was... Actually, it was the second half. The middle of the second half. Yeah. Because that's when we started block schedule. Yeah, that was weird. He was just vanished. I never saw him again. Yeah. I was, I was kind of glad, but then, like, later in life, I kind of was like, what happened to this kid? I wonder how he's doing. I miss him. I miss him, too, because he was just the perfect person to fuck with, honestly. As harsh as that sounds, I mean... Yeah. We we all know those people. We we can't lie. We just like fucking with people too. It's there's like no bad blood in when we do it. It's just no, for it's fun. All, it's all out of love. Yeah, we're just we're assholes, but we love people. Yes. Some uh, people. Yeah. There you go. Anyway. Uh so me and Joseph, the the gods of music <laughs> determined that we were the perfect match. So the gods of music put us together. Yeah, we matched on Grinder, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Grinder is the gods of music. Or the. What was it? <laughs> what did you say? Gods of music, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we met. I wanted to learn how to play guitar. That way I could impress him. Because that's, that's all I learned guitar for. I will, fuck the Green Day story. That was just a lie. I met Joseph and I thought he was hot and I really wanted to impress him with playing guitar. Playing um, guitar. The the feelings are mutual. Yes. So uh then you know, next next thing you know, we get closer and closer and closer. He gets jumped, and then we become we go from friends to like brothers. We we went over that story in the first episode. Yeah, so you already know that. And then uh we hung out quite a bit during that summer. We went to the river. I hurt my finger. Couldn't play guitar for like a week. So I did it for you. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, he had a bass, had three strings on it. I was jamming on that thing. And then I realized, hey, this is actually pretty fun. I like this instrument. And then, uh, yeah, we were we were talking about doing a band for a while. We didn't know how, uh, like really know how to go about it. I think you were going to play bass. Yeah, I, I was, and then... We, we established that you were the better guitarist. <laughs> yeah. And then I ended up getting my own bass guitar. Still am. And so. I fucking... I learned the shit out of that. Because <laughs> I didn't want to be, like, one of those generic-ass bass players who just plays the bass just because they suck at guitar. So I went, I went from being the guitarist to a bassist just like that just because Joseph was better than me and then I ended up falling in love with that instrument I didn't want to be a bass player I wanted to be a bassist there's a fucking difference there is there's a fine difference a bass player is just somebody who plays the bass but a bassist is somebody who lives for the instrument and wants to learn it to its full capabilities so next time you want to call me a bass player you better fucking square up nigga <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck well, that just came out <laughs> bleep 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 no bleeps here nah I fucking said it in the first episode <laughs> yeah oh yeah huh? yeah I was making fun of the fucking the norts <laughs> yeah anyway but uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah. imagine that like that fucking meme with that little nerdy kid oh god uh, what was it what was that meme it was like the mom was like I brought you into this world and I can take you out. And <laughs> that kid's. Square just, up then. You just show that kid's face and it's like, step up, nigga. <laughs> That's hella funny. <laughs> That's what. I, 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 like the first thing I pictured was that one kid that was throwing shit around. Your actions will have their consequences. Don't fuck with me. I got the power of God and enemy on my side. <laughs> anyway. So, uh. So yeah. How uh, yeah, about that? Yeah. <laughs> I pulled my mic away. So, yeah, I, I got better <laughs> at bass, and I think we got together for our first jam session on December 26th. I think it was the day after Christmas. You remember those dates? Somehow, yeah. I, I fuck. Because I, I, I remember it was like sometime after Christmas. I think it was like the day right after Christmas. Because mm -hmm. you brought over your, your giant ass practice amp. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then we just fucking got to work. <laughs> yeah, we were, we were just jamming out, and then uh, we 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 made magic. Magic came out of our uh, instruments, and we thought, hey, we could do something with this. We we actually sound pretty good. 
and then countless hours of jamming out to For Whom the Bell Tolls and Damn It and American Idiot. We were looking for a drummer, a drummer to complete that. That way we didn't have to play the tracks anymore. <laughs> right. And we found one. Yep. Eventually. So about four months pass. Uh, I was a TA for an English one class. Well, technically, I wasn't supposed to be a TA at first. I was supposed to be in that fucking class because I was stupid and I <laughs> failed English one. I wasn't stupid. I just didn't care about school like I should have. Same. So, uh... I'm pretty retarded. Yeah, I failed the first... I failed the last half of English one. So, I had to take... I had to be in that class for the second half of that. That year? Yeah. Um, Block schedule has, like, fucked everything up. Yeah. So, the first half of that... Yeah, the first half of that course, I got to be a TA... And I met this kid named Cooper. Like I was asking random people. I was like, hey, you know how to play drums? Hey, you know how to play drums? You want to play drums in our band? Everybody was like, you got a band? We're like, yeah. What's it called? Hell I don't know, joy. dude. I don't know. Oh, yeah. We was, didn't know at that time. Yeah. So I met this kid named Cooper. He said that he knew how to play the drums, but he didn't have a kit. And I was like, yo, would you be down? Maybe we could, like, all chime in, chime in and get some money together for a kit we never did that he got it himself (laughs) yeah (laughs) uh then after that we needed a name so uh we're we're like we were thinking about that for days dude yeah and then in the united states history we went on uh our shitty ass school tablets pulled up a band name generator and we're like yo dude what would be a cool name and we kind of settled on anything with the word hell in it because we're edgy teenagers who like Satan. Hail Satan. So we uh, typed in hell and a bunch of like names were coming up with the word hell. Like hell above, hell awaits. That would probably would have been a better name. <laughs> and then we... I, I think I remember like fucking some of our old names. I think I wanted to call the band Mutt. Yeah. Mutt would be like a cool skate punk name. Yeah. But I wanted it because, you know, like a mutt's like a mixed breed of things. And we really right. like combined punk rock and metal. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, then, then that's when we really 13th decided. 13th grade. Let's put, <laughs> let's put hell in it. 13th grade was another one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually fucking went on uh, this website at the time. Uh, Eric Andre. He had this website called Eric's Band Names. And I legit fucking went on there seeing, trying to see if there is a name that can we can actually use. And I found 13th grade. And then I found, uh, what was it, Legal Aliens? Yeah. It was Legal Aliens. That was fucking, that was awful. But, yeah, then we went on the band name generator. And we, like, skipped through 15 pages. And then we found a name called Helljoy. And we kind of thought... That sounds pretty tight. It, mm. <laughs> Little did we know, as we got older, that 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 got really cringy really fast. You know, everybody I, fucking liked that name, but in the end, you are your own worst critic. So I'm like throughout. I want to say like a month into that, I was sitting there thinking, I was like, that's a really bad name. And, like, I, I think I, like, brought it up to you one time. You're like, eh, I think it's fine. I was like, all right, it's fine. And uh, we never, we, we didn't change it for a while. Yeah. So, we got everything set up. We were trying to be super official as fuck. We made an email. We made an Instagram. I mean, I think we made Instagram. a Facebook page. I still have that Facebook page. Me too. Me too. Still public aliens. Yeah. Which, spoiler alert, that's what we fucking changed the name to. But uh, I'm pretty sure if we could have made our fucking own Wikipedia page, we would have. Oh, 100%. <laughs> That's how fucking into it we were getting. So we had everything set up and we had our first band practice at. Was it at Cooper's house? Or was it was it at here? my house. Yeah, was it at your house? Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That picture was our first official practice. Mm-hmm. So Was he in the background of that? Yeah. Oh, I didn't see him. The drummer's always been. <laughs> the drummer's always hidden. So we were a three-piece rock and roll duo. 
three-piece rock and roll duo. Fucking retard. <laughs> so uh, we're a three-piece band, and, you know, kind of like after, after, like, my inspirations, you know, Blink-182, Green Day at the time, yeah. Alkaline Trio. I've always, like, I've always liked the three-piece sound because it's more, like, simple, straightforward, and just less maintenance. Well, as, as we fucking thought, the more that uh, that shit happened... The more that we realized, man, maintaining a band is fucking hard. <laughs> yep. And we didn't really have all the necessity. Uh, what's the word? Necessities. Yeah, we didn't even have a fucking microphone. Yeah. I remember uh, my neighbor. Um, she, or, You remember that one time she walked over here uh, when we were doing that little thing? I think it was from on my birthday. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't. It was some other time. We, it was just me, you, and Cooper. And... um. She walked over and she's like, is this your little band? And I was like, yeah. She's like, okay, well, I work at the mall. I do this and that. And um, I wanted to know if you guys, like, if you guys wanted to play over there for a gig. And, like, I walked back to you guys and I told you and you, everybody was like, yeah, yeah. And so I walked back over to her and we were like, yeah, we'll do it. We never did it. <laughs> never. So, yeah, we didn't have, like, all the necessities and we weren't really making that much progress <laughs> no i think we can only we i we could play for whom the bell tolls all the way through we could play american idiot all the way through so we could barely play blitzkrieg pop yeah. i remember cooper's timing was always like a little bit off on that one but no shade to him we just never like really practiced enough yeah no we didn't have like a, a set practice schedule we were just whenever like, we could yeah whenever we could and like there there was always something that kind of came up last second for all of us it was just like we we never really got into the groove of just practice 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 like we would obviously practice on our own time but it's not the same when you don't have the other two pieces there it's like you can't get that timing down you can't get like you can't make little changes to what you feel like would sound better with what we're playing I don't know it was just yeah it was just something we, we tried to make it work as best as we could. We did it for a little bit. We didn't get any gigs, unfortunately, because, like we said, we didn't practice all that much. Um, we, I don't know. We just couldn't get everything down like we wanted to, like everything. For whatever reason, we just jumped into it, expecting us to like get a gig right off the bat. I don't know. Well, f- me personally, that's how I was. I was like, yeah, we're going to do this. And... Um, there was like I, I see all of these bands and I see all of the, all of these local bands and I never really thought like how they started in the first place. I never really thought to myself like, oh yeah, they were a garage band one time or like like they they were just at home just playing drums and playing guitar and bass and singing and they they practiced. They put in that time and effort and that's how they got somewhere. They were signing up for these gigs. They were doing all of that stuff, and I never really thought about that until later on. You know, like, that really, like, I, I lost a lot of motivation when I started thinking about that, too. I don't know about you, but that, that kind of, I was like, I don't know if I can do this at, at one point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. Every time there's an awkward silence, a gay baby is born. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was looking at wrestling. <laughs> anyway, I saw that. That's why I was just rambling and I didn't know what to say, so I just kept it going. Uh, yeah. It was it was a rough ride, honestly. I I don't re I do not regret anything about that because I still think we. Uh, grew a little bit from that we learned something from it we learned something from it whether it didn't work out or not i still think we had a lot of fun doing it yeah i had fun i had a great time especially when we practiced at cooper's house because he had a fucking swimming pool yeah and those days were fucking hot in that garage we spent 20 minutes practicing in six hours in the pool (laughs) yeah good times i'm still pissed off cooper never paid me that five bucks remember when he made me play that mannequin game yeah Cooper, you owe me five bucks, you fuck. <laughs> uh, whatchamacallit. And then I remember my fucking ex would get mad too because 
I don't, I don't, I really don't know what the fuck it was about it, but she would always get so fucking butt hurt. She would always bitch at me, you know, why the fuck are you guys swimming? And I was like, bruh, it's a hundred fucking degrees in that garage. What's so bad if we want to swim was, while we practice? It was more than a hundred degrees yeah, in the garage. Like, yeah, it was like in the 110s, 110, especially with all of our fucking body heat and everything too. Yeah, we were, we were going at it, dude. I, I don't know how Cooper did it. Yeah, Cooper, Cooper fucking took that shit. Yeah, well, like drumming in general is like, yeah. like you can be in a cool room and you'll you'll heat up pretty quick. Yeah, definitely. But like he, we were in a garage that was like a hundred ten plus, just practicing and practicing and for twenty minutes, heat. regardless. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I I never like really understood that. Stood that. It's like sorry we didn't go there just to like straight up practice. You know, we still practice. That was her intent on going there if we wanted if i can take a dip in the pool so what so uh yeah that whole fucking scheduling conflict thing got out of hand and uh cooper really just didn't seem like that into it anymore and i don't blame him because i think he expected like a lot more out of our sound but we i think we made it like a bit clear from the beginning that we were planning on being a punk rock metal band and I don't think like any of the songs that he wanted to play really fit that style. So I thought it was just better if we parted ways. And that's what we did. I mean, it was there was no bad blood between us in the breakup or like our our departure from him. But uh I just felt like his heart wasn't in it. And we needed somebody who, like, would, would be fucking down. And we did at first. But the same situation that he didn't have a drum kit. So that never ended up working out either. Then after that, we're just a duo for a while. We both just kind of lost motivation for it at the same time, really. Yeah, and then and we, we thought, kinda... what, what would fucking amp it up? Like, what would bring back that passion and I was like you know that's when you realized Helljoy was a bad name huh Helljoy was bad I thought to me it wasn't I didn't think it was a bad name huh I just thought it didn't fit what we were trying to do because pop punk and fucking metal yeah Helljoy like really just fit like the metal side so we ended up on a worse fucking name <laughs> what was that Jacob? I don't even like fucking talking about it honestly what was it so, <laughs> at first it was going to be illegal aliens, and then I actually googled what a, an illegal alien was, because I was still young and dumb. And I was like, hey, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's too controversial. And I really thought aliens were fucking cool back then. I think everybody had that phase where they really liked aliens. Some people are still in it. <laughs> yeah. So, we came up with the name Public Aliens. Yay. And then as soon as we established that that was going to be the name, I got together, or I got fucking started on changing everything. I deleted everything, fucking Helljoy, changed the Facebook thing. Our email is the only thing that still says, Hel still says Helljoy on it, but I use that for the WWE Network now. <laughs> I forgot that was a thing. Uh, the email? Yeah. You know what I realized? You know what I forgot to talk about? What? I fucking wrote a whole album for Helljoy. Oh, yeah, huh? I had, like, 12 songs, like, completed. Yeah. Remember remember sitting there trying to, like, me and you together, we would just sit down and, like, try to write a song, and it would just never work? We got one song down. We that got was one really song good. down. But everything after that, every time we tried to write something, it was just, like, the Kaku. lyrics. Huh? It was just bad. Yeah, the lyrics were bad. The guitar and bass wasn't it. The guitar and bass weren't too bad. It was mainly like the lyrics and like the melodies. Yeah, because I, I I only wrote fucking lyrics for that. I didn't write any like guitar parts to it. I think the only thing that we did was uh, what was it? It'll all get better. Was that the song that we wrote at Austin's house? Yeah. Oh yeah, that was about some personal shit. I don't think we should share here. Yeah, I wrote a verse. You wrote a verse. We both worked on the chorus together. I'm pretty sure I still have the fucking track list. You looking for right now? Yeah. Yeah, that was... The thing that really, like, got me motivated 
like that that was one of the points where i was like the most motivated to do this yeah, thing like i just kept like sending songs sending songs yeah over and i was and like over. yeah yeah i can like i can do this like, i can work with this and then he started sending the songs and i started writing guitar and like i i remember writing a little bit of bass but that was all root notes because i didn't know what the fuck i was doing with bass mm-hmm. and uh, <laughs> um like, i don't know it was I was I was ready. I was ready to get going. I was for whatever reason thought I was ready to record. I never did that, thank God. But <laughs> like we would obviously like send recordings of us like playing something mm-hmm. and send it to each other, but we never really like I don't think we ever really like released any of that on social media, did we? Uh we recorded or like yeah, we would record like little tiny samples of what we would do. Yeah, and then we would just record our jam, jam sessions and shit. That's as far as... Oh, God fucking damn it. Oop. Delete. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's pretty much as far as we would go. We would just, like, record little 15-second videos of us playing to a riff that we wrote. Yeah. It was cool. Another gay baby has been born. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I got to stop looking at this shit. Okay, so... uh. uh- what were some of the songs I wrote? I know New Year, New Razor. Yeah, was. I was just going to say New Year, New Razor. That one's probably like the most popular one. I think I wrote one that you really liked. I think it was called Closing Candlelight. That was supposed to be like the last song. I personally thought it was fucking bad, but mainly because <laughs> I was I don't know what I was trying to do. I think I was trying to write like a slow ballad type thing about. I think that was one of the songs that I, like, like I really said like, oh yeah, I can work with this. You're like, like, I, I can, think this is your best song, dude. I, this I could really good. Yeah, I, f- I really felt like I could do something with that one too. Mm-hmm. It'll all get better. That was the one that we worked on. It was mainly because like I I I still mostly play acoustic stuff, but like that like that's one of the things that like we were always on electric guitar and like doing like distortion and and throwing in like just trying to be fast and cool and and punk and metal and whatever but i was like i i kind of took that i was like uh, i'm gonna take a break on that and then i'm gonna work on some acoustic stuff so i did that and uh it was a good time i don't remember any of the chords i don't remember how any part of it went i don't even remember the lyrics but uh fuck dude those are good times i really like that yeah just being able to write. I feel like some of my best lyrics came from that, too. Because, like, some th- th- those came from, like, some real fucking Messed up terms. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. It's, like, like still, for me, like, it, it's it's hard to write, like, happier songs. Mm-hmm. I, can, I, I can't fucking write a happy song. I, I can't. It's, if I do, it takes a long, like, a long time to, like, really figure something out. One is because I usually play, like, slower, like, kind of like sad boy shit. I'm always, I'm a big sad boy. No, <laughs> <laughs> but um, like I don't know. I, I just I just can't write happy for my life. It's like every everything I write, like I write a lot of sad lyrics. Um, all my guitar stuff is like slow and and sad <laughs> yeah it's for sure just to sum up everything i just said i i i play sad i play sad stuff <laughs> i don't know what else to say about that <laughs> oh man uh what should we call it Look. I, I, there's one that i wrote about mateo <laughs> mateo and pig yeah that bitch down the street yeah fuck that bitch but anyway i wrote about them i think it was called family betrayal <laughs> yeah yeah that was one of them i remember i wrote that in a, new, a notebook and i transferred it there's a lot of things that we wrote on like that kind of stuff yeah definitely Fuck, man. I really wish I still had that. That pisses me off that I don't. You probably have it laying somewhere around your house. I mean, uh, the album, like, all oh. the songs I wrote for it, I put mm-hmm. it, I made, like, a mock album. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. 
Okay, so... Let's talk about what you're doing now. So, yeah, Joseph went to the Marines, Helljoy. I'm not, I don't even call it public aliens. It's always going to be Helljoy to me, honestly. Yeah. Public aliens is just a fucking... It's even more it's of a just retarded a ass name. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Helljoy kind of officially disbanded. And at that point, I was like, fuck, what am I going to do? <laughs> I was like trying to record my own thing, but I didn't have any software. I didn't have a laptop. I didn't have anything to fucking record with. You so, didn't have anybody to play with either. <laughs> I was going to do it myself. I was going to do everything right. myself. So that ended up falling through after I hyped it up for so long. And then eventually, you know, this band that I really like called Suburban Paradise, a.k.a. the High Voltage Band. You knew them as a High Voltage Band first. Yep. Hit me up and asked me to play because their bass player left and I filled in that spot. And almost three years later, I'm still playing with them. We got a new song called A Room Out. Hold Check on. Out. Let, let, let's backtrack a minute. How did you find out about them? Okay, so <laughs> we were at a we were at our cult meetings, aka youth group, and uh, they were advertising them at Woodward Park because they're gonna play the Memorial Day thing, and I kind of thought, well, shit, since I'm hearing this band at ch- fucking church. <laughs> And let me just get this straight. You know, this is completely unnecessary to talk about, but I just feel the need to say it. I didn't fucking care about that church. I literally only went because it was a place to hang out and, you know, there's free pizza and shit. So I figured, oh, yeah, I'm learning about this band at church. It's going to be a lame-ass Christian band. Well, I, I kept on at it. I was like, no, you got to listen to them because I went to that. Yeah. And then he eventually showed me the music, and I was like, fuck, this is really good. <laughs> and then it's just like, it's a, it's a really strange coincidence how things work out. You know, at first you didn't want anything to do with that band, then you become a fan, now you're playing fucking bass for them, and you're on one of their songs. It's a blessing and a fucking fortune. It's everything that I could have asked for, because it's given me everything that I wanted so far. It's giving me shows. It's giving me exposure. And it's still giving, too. It's It made me a better musician because now I understand, you know... Everything that s- goes into it. Sometimes simplicity is better, so I really, like... I really... I How, how would you put it? Simplified my bass plan. Kind of made me, like, understand what music better. It? Yeah. So... When, when complicated bass lines, like when the music calls for complex bass lines, I'll shoot it. But if it doesn't need it, then there's no problem on playing root notes. You know, you got to think about the music and what's best for it. And Room, our newest song was, asked for both pretty much, simplicity and some complex shit. Yeah. And that I I feel like that was like what changed me for the better. I also raised my fucking bass up quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play down to my knees anymore. I just play down to my hips. Cuz it hurt your back over time, didn't it? Uh yeah. Now my back's a little bit contorted, but fuck it. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. It, it's just contorted enough to where like you can still keep it low and not hurt yourself. Too yeah, much. because of that fucking band now. I don't jump anymore because <laughs> huh. we were playing at Gilman, which was like one of my fucking dream venues to play at. You, you know, do. if you don't know, if you're stupid, then we're just I'll not in. too big into music like that. But if you're into music and you don't know what the Gilman is, then you're stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the Gilmans were fucking bands like Green Day, Rancid, Operation Ivy, which disbanded pretty early on. But I mean, you still should know them if you're into like that type of stuff. That's where they got their start, and I always thought it'd be cool to play there, either Helljoy or not, just fucking getting my, making my mark in that venue. That was, that was my goal. And you did it. Now you have, what, two, or a couple stickers there? Yeah. A couple shows there. Uh, the first show, we were playing a song, and I was getting into it. I was fucking headbanging, which was like the start to my neck problems. 
I was fucking jumping all over the place. And then one spot called for a massive jump. I made that fucking jump, almost touched the ceiling. I came down, my bass unplugged. <laughs> the, the one, the fuck, my dream show, and I fuck up somehow. <laughs> but it's a memory. Yeah. My bass just completely cuts out. Their dad's fucking messing with the the amps and everything. But you could just see my cord dangling from my leg. <laughs> There's a video of that, too. There is video of it, and it's fucking embarrassing. But, you know, that's, that's something to remember for sure. And, you know, to this day, I still like what I do, you know, with every band, you know, there's a conflict, but the good definitely outweighs the negative and I'm grateful for them. And I'm grateful for Joseph for showing me them. You're welcome. (laughs) Now I want to, I want to hop back into something. I want to, no, like in, like back into like a band and stuff. It's been, it's been a while. I would definitely, my biggest advice, if you're really, if you're really passionate about it, then definitely start your band. Yeah. But if you're impatient like me, join a band. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I jumped right into this. I jumped right in at the perfect time because they're in the middle of a competition. They won the fucking, they won for their for the state of California, mm-hmm. they were in the top three in the whole United States. Yeah, we didn't win it, but I mean, shit, what a perfect time to jump in. Could have jumped in a jumped into a contract, a record deal, right? We right. didn't win, but I mean, shit, that was still cool. And then these songs that you grow up listening to for like two years, three years, are officially yours now. Yeah, <laughs> technically, I'm like. These songs that you fucking listen to on SoundCloud, Spotify, whatever, you're playing them now. With that group. Yeah. When fucking Losing Myself came in, or when Losing Myself came out, like a month later they hit me up. Those songs were still relatively new. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, I can make bass lines for these. So things I completely like reconstructed. Yeah, redid the bass it. Up. And I left my mark on those songs live. And yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm definitely fucking. I'm definitely happy with what I do. You know, recording music, playing shows, practicing. Even pra- practicing is still fun for me. So that's that's a sign that things are going good. <laughs> when practice is fun, then that's good. Yeah. See, like right now, like like I said, I want to like hop into another band or like make another band. But one of the things, like, with making another band is out here, there's not a whole lot of drummers. Not at all. And when there is, there are, they're either already taken. Or they're just, they just don't want to, they just want to focus solely on that. Yeah, and they want to focus solely on their band and no other, like, side projects or anything. And, uh, or the drummers that are available aren't the best. And... Like, I'm not saying that there's no good drummers out there, like, that aren't taken. They just don't see any... In, like, th- they don't th- see any room for improvement. Yeah, exactly. That, and it's, it's hard to find. Yeah. And like, they're, they're, they're kind of hidden away. I don't know where to find them. I'm about to post something on Craigslist. <laughs> Fucking... I would do it. Yeah, honestly, bro. Like, that that's something I, like, I've always wanted to do. Yo. Maybe like, there's a fucking face group, Facebook group. Yeah. About it, like San Joaquin Valley musicians. And like. Yeah, there might be. I, I need to start looking into that stuff more because I need something to keep my mind off of other things too. Like, I don't know. Just all this stress and stuff is like that. Like music is like my outlet. Is Escape. that's the way? That's the way I kind of let my stress go. Mm-hmm. And that's that like I could sit there and play guitar for hours and then I'll feel fine afterwards like I, I could start out all sad and fucking like wanting to die and then the next fucking two hours I'm up and I'm like all right cool let's go for a run I'm, what's up guys like I don't know I'm it's cool yeah definitely it's definitely an escape and it's definitely in my opinion yeah. the best medicine 
because no matter what you're doing, you know, there's nothing like fucking listening to music, playing music. Mm-hmm. Anything involving music, in my opinion, is the best tool. Yeah, like for me, I'm, I'm two things I absolutely love: music and just being out with like, like in nature. As yeah. cliche as it sounds, like, but one of my like, one one of the spots that I go to is um is a river right like right by my house, and if I can't sleep, I'll usually take my longboard over there and just sit at the river playing guitar for a couple hours and come back home and then stay awake the rest of the day or sometimes I'll just crash and sleep all day and then mess up my sleep schedule <laughs> and then that's when I do the same thing over and over again keep on going to the river Fuck that's, it though. That, that's my happy spot yep <laughs> yep so I think I think that's pretty much it for like this episode I know we got off topic a lot, but I mean, shit, music's just such an important thing to us that it's kind of hard to stay on topic when you just got so much stories to tell, you know, especially with the people that you tell those stories with. So, uh, whenever we make episode three, hopefully it doesn't take as long as it does. I mean, fuck, we're still in, like, a pandemic, and we're still making this episode for you guys. Like, right now, we, we, we didn't even, like, plan on doing this today. We, like... He hit me up. He was like, hey, you want to hang out? I'm like, yeah, let's make that podcast. Yep. So here we are sitting in my garage in this with, with a fan. I'm sure you guys can hear it. And cause everything out in the living room and my room and stuff is loud. But we're trying to make it work. For sure. For sure. We're doing what we can. So, yeah, hopefully you guys you know, enjoyed this episode. If you were late to music just like we do hit like uh if you want to fucking start a band hit joseph up because he's looking <laughs> <laughs> looking for a drummer a bassist and probably a vocalist because <laughs> i can't sing for my life yep all right well take care guys thank Stay you safe wash your fucking hands and see you guys later thank you for listening we'll see you in the next one